Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on rebuilding Eden with one naturally farmed fruit tree at a time. So I firmly believe that Florida could be a tropical fruit Eden, and the only thing stopping us is humanity. Um, somebody sent me a link Last night, a good friend of mine, Carson, uh, sent me a link to a YouTube video, and it was the title was, This Guy Really Knows How to Grow Fruit Trees. And I didn't look at it because I knew who it was by, and I really don't care for their videos. Uh, they've been here before and done a video here, and I just got weird energy from them. I, I am a like energy person and I feel I can feel a different energy from different people and I pick up on that and I just felt that right from the start <clears throat> uh, from when they came here to do a video and when somebody doesn't even get out of the car or roll down their window to uh, introduce themselves that come with people uh, that like sends a strong signal to signal to me that they really not didn't care to be here and uh, that's uh, the signal I got was weird energy so we grow everything naturally and don't believe that a individual is the answer to how fruit trees are supposed to be grown and in the Garden of Eden there was only two humans, and it was all wildlife and diversity. They didn't show raccoons in cages or rows of crops and tract homes. Uh, they just showed a diversity of animals in all the picture I can see, and fruit tree, and um, vines, and plants. Diversity, much like this. and. This is how fruit trees want to be grown. They don't need you to tell them or us to tell them how they need to be grown. It's our job to manage the system uh, in a holistic manner that uh, complements life and creates diversity in the soil. And uh, one of their main things was in the video that he sent me was uh, they use glyphosate and they swear that glyphosate doesn't cause any damage. Well, you've got to read some stuff and you have to look at some stuff and you have to formulate thoughts uh, about our chronic health issues and try to search out answers um, on your own because in case you haven't been paying attention, there's a chronic health issue going on today in the U.S. and it's due to the way our food is being farmed and one of the problems with that uh, farming model is glyphosate and glyphosate uh, they figure is cause for neuronal damage, gut dysbiosis, uh, obesity, uh, feminization in children, um, uh, all kinds of stuff. It, uh, it changes your mitochondria. It is, damages your mitochondria and it kills soil life. And the soil life is the uh, life that winds up inside the plants. That's the nutrients for these plants. There's, they've done major studies on this and it's all coming out. So it's not like I'm making this up. So the soil life, both the anaerobic and the aerobic, is needed to uh, create a homeostasis of biological life that is plant beneficial, uh, that winds up in the food we consume and are the nutrients and the biology and the enzymes that we need in our gut to digest food and get nutrients. And when you use chemicals, glyphosate in particular is a particularly strong one. Strong one. It's closely related to Agent Orange, and it disrupts uh, hormone levels in mangoes. So when somebody goes on there and promotes 
one person as having the answer to the right way to grow fruit trees and then they are saying to use glyphosate, I instantly know that they're just doing that, especially when it's a nursery, which is what it was, is. I know they're just doing that to get free plants and that's not the right way to uh, influence people. I know people are looking for one answer and think that that's that could be the right one. The weed is is hindering your plant productivity, but it's wrong. And um, I'll do a link to uh, Zach Zach Bush, who kind of puts it together spiritually and scientifically uh, well. And I watched a video of his this morning. And I'll also do another link to uh, Dr. James White, who's a uh, entomologist from. Uh, Florida that uh, discusses the rhizophagy cycle. So the plant endophytes are the, the biologicals in the soil are the plant endophytes that are the nutrients that are missing in our food today that we're, we're not getting, that we've been killing with uh, modern uh, conventional uh, chemical farming. So I'm gonna go over uh, uh, Garcinia fruit trees today. I'm going to look closely at uh, the achachas. I'm going to go look at all of our achachiro trees that, uh, fruit trees that have been um, naturally farmed. We don't water anything. We don't use chemicals. We only use uh, our daily compost, which is what that is. I just gave this achachiro tree another load of Compost. It contains our miniature zebu cow and bull manure, uh, to about 20 pounds, uh, and I try to put it uh, every day, uh, once a day when I clean out the barn. It's mostly 100 pounds of hay, uh, coastal Bermuda grass hay, and it's got some urine in there and saliva from the cows, and it also has about 20 pounds of manure, a little bit of donkey manure also. So all holistically grown. So this is our large fruiting achachiro tree. It's why we started this farm uh, eight years ago to be an achachiro farm. And we have about 500 achachiro trees. I had no idea at the time I could not find achachiro trees 10 years ago or eight years ago. 10 years ago, I started looking for them. Uh, I got this tree from Flying Fox Fruit. Uh, it costs quite a bit of money. It's the most expensive tree I ever bought. But it was only like a six foot tall uh, tree that was about as thick as this branch. And I planted it here in full sun. It was in a root, root pruning pot and never connected it to water. Uh, but uh, I did connect it after two years. So I don't water plants when I plant them. I just plant them in the ground and I've never had an issue with it, even when this was a lawn. Uh, cause I kept it along and just applied wood chips and removed the plants from around the base of the tree, but stuff just wasn't growing. And I didn't realize at the time I've been on this, this journey of, uh, trying to figure out, uh, soil health and soil fertility and how trees grow. Uh, they grow without us best. So the more you can remove yourself from your system, the better off the tree is. I mean, they grow in nature. Trees grow in nature. Uh, this tree is not any different than the oak tree or the pine tree or the, the palm tree uh, that's native to here. It's just, uh, has the potential to be a invasive species because it grows so easily and so well and you can plant them in full sun. And what you do need to focus on is the soil health, uh, the health of the soil. We used to be a biodynamic farm and we used to do all the biodynamic preps. Uh, we take uh, inspiration from all regenerative farm modalities, uh, but the one that probably inspired me the most was Indian zero budget natural farming, then biodynamic farming, then Korean natural farming, and permaculture, of course, is up there. So we take all these modalities and modify them, uh, tweak them a little bit for what I can do, my abilities for this situation. So I don't do a lot of chop and drop, but I have a lot of different plants here and I have all this sugar cane here and the raccoons come by and eat the sugar cane. They chop it all down. So I don't even have to do it uh, just from the life. This was a huge sugar cane patch and I thought, what is getting my sugar cane? And it was the raccoons chewing on them. 
but that's okay. Uh, that's that's a natural chop and drop, and I don't have to disturb anything. So uh, I try to plant a lot of different plants together. So this is a this sachacha tree. It's starting to bloom, and it blooms on these uh, secondary twigs, and it has to get kind of big before it'll start blooming. This is our third year fruiting this tree and it, last year it produced more than a hundred fruit and hopefully this year it'll do the same i've given this four piles of daily compost there are rules against applying manure to uh, food crops uh, and you have to wait 120 days for fruit trees after you apply it so i made sure make sure and plant it uh, or, or put the, put it down well in advance of that but I wouldn't even mind keeping all this fruit for myself so that I can replant all the fruit trees here, all the seeds. And I direct sow Garcinia trees. We have 16 different types of Garcinia fruit trees, uh, you know, the uh, mangosteen relatives. And uh, they do really well here. They all seem to grow, including mangostana. We, I can't tell a difference uh, between any of them as far as cold sensitivity. <clears throat> Some spots are a little more protected, which is a good spot to put trees. So they get more shade and they get protect, uh, protected from uh, the, uh, get protected from the, uh, the sun. But this was put in full sun right in the lawn and never had any problem. I never gave it any protection. Uh, people overthink stuff and think that they need to do something. But in actuality, I have found that the best uh, response is to do it as close to nature as possible uh, in order to get a uh, replicate Eden. Uh, this is a, a juicy pearl star apple tree seed grown. Most of our trees are seed grown and they all seem to do just fine being grown naturally without ever having to water them. I do not water trees when I plant them. There was a period two years after we had been here where I connected the trees, we put a well in, my partner was freaking out because the trees just weren't growing in the lawn. So this is a Garcinia macrophylla fruit tree. Uh, probably one of the best tasting fruit of the Garcinia families. Uh, from the Garcinia uh, species uh, of fruit trees. Uh, Garcinia macrophylla, it has an okay sized fruit on it. It looks much like uh, Garcinia dubico, so it has a point. Uh, the leaves get quite large on it, and this tree was growing inside this heliconia. It's a seed grown tree, um, and it's uh, doing quite well. It's, I expect this to be one of our next Garcinia fruit trees to fruit. So we do fruit eight different species. So that would be number nine, and I believe Luke's is, uh, would be number 10. There's another one right here that's not quite as big. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe too much shade is affecting it. So I'm gonna go over here and look at the Luke's Garcinia, and then I'm gonna go look at some other uh, uh, Achachiro fruit trees. So all this diversity is what's needed and the roots in the ground in order to keep carbon in the soil, which is where the uh, microbiology resides. So the roots, the living roots of the biodiverse orchard floor is the diversity of the soil microbiome. Uh, you can't really build it without a diversity of plants. So. We have 200 different species of fruit trees and probably there's uh, easily 50 to 100 different plants that grow in our orchard floor at different times of year. And most of them were just uh, put there by nature. Look at these Garcinias here while I'm here. So I have a couple of Garcinias. I noticed on Bellamy, I just bought uh, some little trees from them. They're doing really well and I'm excited about that. But they were selling a sweet Garcinia madruno. That's Garcinia acuminata. Uh, it's a round fruit that looks much like the Garcinia madruno and that's what that is. I also have another one growing. So it's a sweet version that looks like Garcinia madruno, but it's not a madruno. It's a Garcinia acuminata um, and it's sweet. And I have a Garcinia dulcis. These are grown in full sun. Garcinia dulcis, full sun. So I'm a little shaded now because the orchard floor grows up. 
It's nice when the orchard floor grows up and it's so beautiful. I mean, look at this. All that diversity they're finding is uh, what is needed for a healthy gut microbiome. The ancient microbiome of the indigenous people had like 40,000 microbes in their gut, whereas modern Americans have less than 10,000. So we need to get back to the point where we have more microbes in our gut in order to uh, be, experience true health and be able to see what true Eden is. And the only way to get there is with diversity of plants on your living orchard floor, because uh, they come from the soil, <clears throat> the ones that are in our gut. So the gut and soil are one and the same, basically. So if we have a sick soil, we have a sick population. <clears throat> and you can't get a healthy soil from the use of chemicals, period. It's impossible. They've proven this. For some reason, people want to sell something. They want to sell you a tree. They want to sell you a, a, a chemical. And people think it's the answer to everything. They want to sell you a, a micronutrient. All those uh, products have a chance to uh, um, transfer pollution into your system. So you're better off trying to do a closed loop system, which is what a biodynamic farm system tries to emulate, a, a nature-based system. For some reason, I never felt like I got any support from the biodynamic um, community. Uh, I know that they've watched my videos, but yet not one, one time one biodynamic farm Farmer posted, I believe in what you do, but you think that if they wanted to support you that they could just like one time uh, say, oh, interesting video, thanks for the information. But I get support from uh, my viewers that, that want to know and understand uh, that chemicals is what's making us sick and it's not the answer. And I just can't put out content that is just wrong just to get uh, viewership. I just can't do it. And um, I don't understand why some people that have a platform uh, choose to be just so self-serving. And that's how I feel that is. But anyway, this is the Luke's Garcinia and it appears like it's trying to flower. That appears to be a flower bud forming there and there. And um, Possibly right on this side, too. Uh, just on those two branches. But that's how they start out. So I'm going to keep watching this. We have about 100 Luke's Garcinias. And they're all growing naturally. Not watered. Just a focus on soil health. Uh, nature and Eden are ones, one and the same. Um... That's why you go into nature to feel good. And uh, for some reason, we think that we're superior and we know better than what nature, that we know how to grow a tree, but the tree doesn't know how to grow. It's like, it's so bizarre how everything is so twisted around and the people actually believe it. It's because it's over money and they get a few people that push the idea and say that this is the best way, this is the best person to, to uh, teach you how to grow fruit trees. And their system is all wrong. Uh, uh, when you're using antibiologicals, antibiotics to grow food, those antibiotics cause death to microbial life. They cause chronic disease in the plants that you consume from the plants you consume and the animals you eat that are raised on those products and they pollute the planet. So it's anti-biological. We're biological beings that are made out of bi bacteria and uh, biology, different microbes. So uh, if we're killing all those microbes, we're killing ourselves, And that's what's going on with our society today. And uh, slowly, I, I believe that the tide is turning, but when I get sent videos like that of people that have the ability to influence uh, a large range of people, and I know they've been here, and I've gotten negative feelings from them, 
like when they wanted to come here and do a video, they asked, this is a Garcinia Livingstonia, they asked when the best time to come was. And I said, well, it's gonna be in June because that's when we'll have all the fruit. But they wanted to come a week after the worst freeze we ever had. I said, well, you know, this is the worst time, worst, worst time you could possibly come. And they said, that's okay. We wanna see your place anyway when it's bad. I, that's just wasn't even true. They just wanted to show that we didn't have any, uh, that our place didn't look good because if you're coming for the first time, you'd want to represent it. If you are doing something good for society, you would want to represent this farm at its highest potential. And you wouldn't come here when you asked when the best time to come was and then want to come at the worst time. So a week after the 31 degrees we have, and then say, well, you don't have very much fruit. Yeah, we didn't have very much fruit because we just had 31 degrees, dude. But anyways, that's okay. I'm over it and I don't really care, but I didn't have a tree to give him. I didn't have fruit to give him. So he wasn't getting anything in return except for gaslighting me. And that was my whole problem with people on TFF. It was the same group of people that just gaslight um, uh, natural farming and think I have a chip on my shoulder. I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I have a chip on the my shoulder maybe because people are polluting uh, Florida and Florida could be Eden. And it's, it can never become Eden with chemicals. So that's that's where I have an issue. And for the failure to that, for uh, with the science that's out available now and the failure for a, a large group of people to even acknowledge the uh, studies that have come out and the information that's out there and just be able to ignore it and continue to pollute when we know that all the pollution runs off into other people's properties and is the root cause of uh, Florida being the most polluted lakes in the nation and die off of uh, whole ecosystems from uh, agricultural pollution, then there's something wrong. And so I do have an issue with that. Anyway, I'm gonna look at Achachiro trees and get off that that talk, because it's depressing to me, and I'm sure it's depressing to you. So this is Achachiro, and it's getting quite large. Uh, it's not that big, but I have one in here that's very large. These are in full shade. And this one's pretty big. I mean, this one's uh, eight feet. And uh, supposedly they said when it gets the size of a Coke can at the bottom, then uh, they start producing fruit. I think that's a good uh, range. So in warmer climates, because we're pretty far north, I feel, feel the Achachiro could probably fruit with uh, five, six years, but because we're so far north and because I really didn't understand the whole soil health and, and growing in nature uh, plan uh, right away. It's been a learning curve for me and I'm still learning, but I pretty much understand it now that I could probably get it to speed up to about seven or eight years, but I don't think we can get down to five or six here, but I could be wrong, maybe in another 10 years. I will change my, uh, or another eight years, I will change my my mind, but I don't see this fruiting. And then it, you know, it does fruit on these little branches um, right here, but I don't see it flowering anymore, but I've been known to miss uh, flowers before. Uh, so I should really look at this good. Um, not ever having water has never hurt this plant. Uh, uh, giving uh, daily compost to it will speed it up, uh, but I have a, such a small amount, because the amount of nitrogen we apply is only 29 pounds of nitrogen per acre through our manure, and, and uh, the rest of the nitrogen comes from all the plants that are cycling nitrogen that are nitrogen fixers, because all plants fix nitrogen if you have the biology in your system. So on the surface of the plant, in the root zone, rhizosphere of the plant, on the uh, 
in the endosphere of the plant, the uh, microbes, the fungal microbes and the bacterial nit microbes are what fixes the nitrogen. This is a huge nitrogen fixing tree and you can have all the legumes in the world or have a complete monocrop of perennial peanut. And if you don't have the biology in your soil, then your uh, legumes are not going to be that good at fixing nitrogen. So it does come down to uh, the biology. And I found the best way to get the biology in there is with the cow manure, the, zebu, the miniature zebu cow manure. That's why I say India was my biggest influence. My little miniature zebus have been shown to have a high percentage of uh, higher percentage of bacterial content, uh, microbial content in their manure. And that's why the miniature zebus or the uh, panganuric cow of India, uh, uh, Bo indicus, the, the, the uh, true miniature uh, cow breed, is what's used for Ayurvedic medicine and um, why their urine sells for up to $10 a liter. Uh, they're just uh, a superior form. It's, and you got to have the edge on agriculture. Uh, that's how they develop chemicals because they found that they uh, speed up plant growth. But at what cost? At the cost of our ecosystem and the cost of human health. Um, it's not the right way to grow and nature is how you can grow and create Eden and it can be done in Florida if we just got out of nature's way. Um, this is a, a, I believe, a Garcinia madruno. I don't know how many hundreds, probably thousands of Garcinias we have here now uh, all together. There's that Garcinia uh, Lindero. It's the Garcinia mangostana, seed grown, more than 20 inches tall in seven months. Supposedly couldn't grow it, you know, below 40 degrees it would die, which is not true. And um, just like you can grow cacao here, these are all cacao. We are gonna be a major cacao farm. Within the next 10 years, uh, you know, it's it, when I first started, it was like, oh, he doesn't produce fruit. Yeah, because I'm growing everything from seed basically, and I'm naturally farming everything. But you give it some time. I didn't buy somebody else's orchard. I planted this myself. I had to figure out, I had to find the journey. There's the Achachura tree, the journey, and the journey, took a little time it takes time it time growing plants is moves in time and space so it's space time you just can't put a time it um, uh, there's a Garcinia dulcis there's a Garcinia dubico so here's another Achachira this one's getting kind of big too I'm gonna go look at those other Garcinias um, to see how they look. The achachiros, because I have some bigger achachiros that um, could be getting close to flowering, uh, so I need to keep an eye on them. Uh, oh, here's a Garcinia. <clears throat> I think this is Mangostana right here. But it could be Lindero. It's either that or Mangostana. It's probably Lindero. I just direct sow them, all Garcinia seeds. I also grow these rare aeroids outside in the ground. So Spirit of Sancti and uh, Anthurium waraquianum, Philodendron um, uh, Maximum and Philodend or Anthurium uh, Regali. This is a new leaf that got trashed from the wind up against this other leaf. Uh, this is Anthurium uh, Capulis Bathum. It's looking good. So this is a bread nut. I noticed the bread nut trees are cold sensitive, but uh, I feel like we passed a turning point. Uh, most of them seem okay. It's a philodendron gloriosum. There's a king anthurium. They're all in the ground. Seems to be doing good. It's got new leaf on it. Uh, it's a philodendron melanochrysum. Uh, that's a philodendron uh, 
Sharoni Eye Mascara. There's an Anthurium Queryl 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 Laments. I was stepping on it. Uh, here's a Philodendron Patriciae. Wasn't in the best spot, but it's hanging in there. There's a Philodendron uh, Tenu. Right behind it is a Philodendron Heterocraspidon. Right there, top cutting. This is my Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. It's in the ground. That's a new leaf right there. It's recovering from being in the out in the elements, not in this location. It was in, outside up against a tree that was, got thrashed in the summer. Um, but it seems to like this location. I see it's got a new leaf forming right there. So it's doing good. Uh, it can grow right out there. I'm waiting for it to go onto that tree. I have lots of rare uh, Monsteras. Uh, this one being uh, Burley Marks Flame. It's out here, you know, no water. It's getting a new leaf right there. Uh, it's getting kind of big. It's in the ground. Here's a Monstera Obliqua. Uh, obliqua? No, this is Esqueleto. Monstera Esqueleto. I have Obliqua Peru, two types. Here's another King Anthurium right here. It's a little trashed. Philodendron Luxurians. Should look better, but it's the end of winter. It's got a new leaf coming out right there. It's gonna look great. Once they spread and fill in, uh, it'll displace this grass and the landscaping will look more botanical rather than uh, grass and weed-like which for some reason people just despise, but the grass really is a good home for microbial life. It is uh, definitely what builds soil. Uh, it's the microbes that build the soil, not compost. Uh, you can make all the compost in the world, but unless it's got the right biology in there and, and it's, if it hasn't been made right, which most thermophilic compost destroys enzymes which are needed for plant uh, cellular function um, it's not going to build soil so the grass builds the soil the zebu manure builds the soil the combination with that with some wood chips thrown in logs whatever some carbon inputs build soil uh, a biodynamic 500 builds uh, soil creates soil aggregation i've been putting little cuttings of all these little uh, philodendrons everywhere um, my durian's doing good. It's right there. It's looking okay. That's the one that looked the worst. I have three of them. I just bought a couple more because they seem to do quite well. Um, I'm going to go look at the, <laughs> look at those, uh, Achachiro trees. So the, the cacao I feel is our biggest success and I feel that this is what this farm is going to be known for within the next 10 years. Uh, we have about 100 trees now. We just started fruiting uh, the yellow rib uh, and got it. we got it down, how they grow. So dry farm cacao and they produce a lot of fruit. And we're in a part of Florida where they said it's not even possible, uh, which is just not true. Uh, it's the biology in the soil that dictates the uh, plant's immune abilities, so the immune response the, uh, from biological stressors or uh, abiotic weather stressors, so non-biological, so heat, cold, uh, wind, um, and look at all the fruit on here. So I'm going to plant all the seeds from that. I'm probably not going to sell any of them. I'm going to give some to a few people. Uh, that wanted them, but I want all the seeds for here. I hate to be greedy like that. I really am not a fruit tree seller or fruit seller. It's just not in me. My partner is, is retiring next week and going to take over that aspect of it. So maybe they can, um, can uh, perfect it because there's definitely room for improvement. So this Achachi Iro is, is getting kind of big. It was getting that black fungus on it, but it seems to... Uh, Turn the corner of it. It was underneath this uh, banana tree. So we have about 450 bananas that I had divided here, all ice cream bananas. 
kind of have ice cream every day of the, of the year now, uh, ice cream bananas. Um, most days I have ice cream bananas available, uh, which is what I wanted to do. There's a little achachiro. There's an eki. There's an achachiro. Let me go look at uh, three that are kind of big. We do have the, here's the achachiro. This one's kind of getting big, but it's not that big. This is going to be the third wave of uh, fruiting achachiro trees. I have a second wave. This one's got new leaves forming on it. Usually when uh, trees start to leaf out the, on the Garcinia family, then they start producing fruit. <clears throat> There's a little achachiro tree here. So we, I bought, because uh, you couldn't find achachiro trees uh, eight years ago when I did this. And I got 40 or so from... I bought 40 trees from Pine Island Nursery and then you just couldn't find them. So I had to find seeds from different sources. So I got seeds from Puerto Rico. I got seeds that had come from Mexico. I got seeds from uh, Hawaii. And I got seeds from, I don't think I got any seeds, well, via Florida from Mexico. Um, there's a cacao but I have a so we we I wanted some of Raul's uh, Primo Selecto variety of Achachiro that's what that is uh, so we do have trees of that and it's supposed to be a larger fr rounded fruited Achachiro and he says it fruits two to three times a year which doesn't surprise me because that's what I found Achachiro does the Nakli latifolia looks great the African peach um, looks really good. There's a hermaphrodite Garcinia Livingstonii. We have three hermaphrodite or self-fertile trees. Um, I got to stop saying dioecious or monoecious because I keep getting them backwards when I talk about it. And it's like, oh, did I just say that? Yes, I make mistakes. I'm just rambling this so stuff off as we go. I don't, I don't pre-plan anything. I just start talking when I come out here. And I usually get influenced by stuff I read, studies I've read, or uh, that that video on this this guy really knows how to grow fruit trees, and he's pushing glyphosate use. And I mean, they just I mean, don't you don't they know what's going on in the planet with glyphosate, and why anybody would push glyphosate as an option? Uh, sure, you might be able to grow some fruit trees using it, but is it really worth destroying everyone else's Florida just so you can sell a fruit tree and, and say that you're the best grower there is? I don't think so. It's just wrong. I think it's wrong. I, I just don't understand why people aren't more conscientious of fellow humanity and fellow life. This is a Garcinia brasiliensis. It's rather disturbing to me. This little Brasiliensis is going to have a huge amount of fruit on it. Uh, usually fruits year-round. The Madruno fruits year-round. The Livingstonii produces two crops for us a year, big crops. This is a Gardneriana. Notice the new leaves and look at all the flowers forming. Uh, there's a fruit on it right there, Gardneriana. It's the one that looks much like Dabico, but is not. This Gardneriana. Uh, lemon drop mangosteen, but it's a beautiful tree. They're beautiful trees. I really like the Garcinia, so I'm getting the Garcinia latissimo. Uh, it's supposed to be a red fleshed variety, which seems odd for a Garcinia. It's from, I think it's from Asia. Is it Asia? I, I'm not going to say for sure. I don't know. I need to relook at that. So this is our Garcinia humbromiana. I've been looking at this tree a lot because this was our eighth Garcinia species we've fruited here. So we fruit eight different Garcinias a year here. And then I try to plant the seeds so that we can eventually become a major producer of all Garcinia fruits. I imagine we're gonna be fruiting Garcinia mangostana. Uh, it is possible. I have no doubts that the, the, the tree is just unaffected by cold weather here, but it's because we have the a uh, life-giving force of the microbials in the soil, which wind up as endophytes inside the 
uh, plant, which are the nutrients, uh, which is why our food is, is lacking in nutrients is because it's lacking in the endophytes, which come from the microbial life in the soil because of the, the farm management. Uh, we have a uh, lifestyle choice we put onto the, the, plant, the tree by destroying the soil life. Uh, cashews, we have about 200 cashew trees now. This is also going to be a major cashew farm, very easy to fruit here, and they produce a lot of fruit from seed. Uh, we have about 250 grafted mango trees. That This one's uh, uh, Super Julie or Juliet, one of the two, I forget. Uh, I'll know when the fruit comes out. And I have an achacha ero over here that's growing in this mess of weeds. Uh, you know, this is healthy to me when a system looks like this. The raccoons have gotten in here and thinned out a lot of the sugar cane, which I'm glad about, and then they've left some. Um, you can It's really surprising they have such a sweet tooth, but that's what that's from. That's all raccoon chop and drop, my assistants. They're also good at cleaning mango seeds for me. Um, when I throw them outside, they just clean them all off and leave them perfectly cleaned. So this is a, a uh, achachiro tree. And it's kind of big and it looks like it uh, could uh, have fruit on it. Uh, uh, it's got a lot of these secondary little twiggy branches, which where is where they fruit. And I don't see any flowers on it, so I don't think it's gonna do anything. Um, but it's very close. This is a great big giant guava, a ruby supreme that usually has a lot of fruit on it. It does have some fruit on it, um, not a lot. It's been doing little tiny crops lately. I've never given this, uh, tree any any inputs because of its location I can't get to it so it uh, has never gotten any daily manure and uh, maybe that's what it needs or my daily compost I got I've been trying to stop calling it daily manure because really it turns people off when you say that it only grows with manure that people are just so far removed from nature and we're so far away from Eden uh, because of our monocrop systems we like to put in for uh, growing food and by the chemicals we use and because of that our foods have become low nutrients so this is the achachiro that's always been in full sun this tree has never been given any water ever and it's the biggest one we have of our second group of achachiro trees and this one's about eight feet too also and it's getting new uh, leaves on it the leaves in the sun achachiros can look a little more haggard than the ones uh, not in the sun but it's nothing to be worried about they can turn a little yellow during times of drought that's because they shut off respiration and uh, when you don't have respiration you also are not going to have all the uh, all the moisture that comes in with the uh, respiration or or, or uh, nutrients cycling correctly. So it breaks down calcium oxalate to get carbon from uh, the calcium oxalate, uh, carbon dioxide, I guess is what's released. So it looks like that's where it would uh, fruit right here, but it's not fruiting. It looks like it's just getting more leaves. It's gonna. It's getting kind of big. It's not the size of a. a uh, I have a pepper tree right there. I need to pull up. Uh, this is a Florigon mango. <clears throat> this is a Cidium longa pediolum, pediolatum, or something like that. I, I need to really get the name down. But usually, until they they, <laughs> they give me a fruit that I like, I. Uh, kind of have issues with the Latin name some, sometimes. It's a guava, a giant Catlea guava. Um, I, Catlea guavas are gorgeous trees, but I'm not crazy about the fruit. Uh, I used to have giant uh, specimens of those. They grow in colder climates. Supposedly this can grow in a colder climate, but it's flowering. Uh, looks like it's gonna give a good flower. So this is gonna be a nice tree to watch in my future videos to see what that fruits, fruit is like. Cherry guava, I guess, is what it is. 
It's our black sapotes. Uh, they've been very good. I didn't realize black sapotes could be as sweet as a sapodilla, uh, but they can. Just gotta leave them on the tree. Uh, these are dry farmed. It doesn't make a difference uh, in fruit uh, flavor if you dry farm. So dry farming has been shown to enhance fruit sweetness. And we are on calcareous rock. Calcium has been shown to uh, improve plant sweetness, fruit sweetness, fruit trees that are grown naturally, dry farmed, naturally produce sweeter fruit. Uh, it's just a known fact that uh, wine growers have known for a long time. Uh, and the dry farmers of tomatoes in California, for some reason people say you can't dry farm in California. We'll tell that to the, all the dry farm uh, wineries out in uh, Northern California and tell that to the indigenous people that dry farm uh, food. So you, you can, maybe you aren't able to dry farm, but it is de everything is possible uh, as far as dry farming. It's the biology. If you don't have the biology in your soils and your soils are highly disturbed, it probably, you would not be successful. But there are ways to tweak your system uh, with soil health in order to enhance your soil to become more biological and grow fruit trees naturally like this. This is an achachiro in full sun and it seems like it's of size where it could start fruiting. Uh, this is one of them that is like getting big enough uh, where it could fruit. But I don't see any flowers forming on it. Maybe next year is its year. Uh, you know, the tropical fruit game is a waiting game. It doesn't happen instantly. If you want instantaneous re results, you probably should grow papaya or mango, or not mango, but uh, bananas. Mangoes are pretty quick too. And why anybody ever has to water mangoes is beyond me. Uh, it seems to be the easiest fruit tree to grow here in Florida. Citrus is right up there with it. But I have to put mangoes above it. Mangoes are super easy. And really all you need to do is apply a little uh, zebu manure and uh, once a year and that's all you need to do. And stay off the soil and manage for soil health so don't disturb the soil. I kind of walk on my soil a little bit more. They say once you have soil aggregation that um, that uh, You can walk on the soil because the sponge effect. So after you step on it, it lifts back up. But I do know that uh, mowing um, causes compaction on sand, especially if there's a lawn holding it all together. So it becomes like a cement bag. And so I try to stay off of it. But now we have so much soil aggregation. And you can tell that the soil is four inches taller where we're not mowing than where we've been mowing. So uh, it's just little tweaks to create Eden. Um, and in order to create Eden out of uh, your yard, you have to uh, welcome nature because nature and Eden are one of the same. And here's a little monarch butterfly uh, pollinating our uh, mango tree. All this life is under attack uh, with the insecticides they use in Florida, which are outlawed in Europe, which have been shown to be, uh, can cause uh, uh, ex extinction from butterflies, the nicotinamides or tinamides, whatever they are. Uh, but they're, they're endorsed and uh, pushed along with glyphosate in our food systems here in Florida. Um, so, uh, is, is that what we want, to kill all biology? I think not. In order to create Eden, you have to welcome all biology and let nature uh, work it out. Because once it's gone, it's gone. So uh, Florida is quickly becoming a uh, one solid city just along the coast here. It seems like from... Uh, Orlando to Miami is uh, is basically one megapolis. 
and there aren't very many natural areas uh, for animals to live and the ones that are left people trapping and kill like the raccoons and the possums because they think they're going to eat their fruit we don't have issues with the possums and the raccoons eating our fruit um, it's, we need all those creatures uh, in order to create paradise they didn't just show eden with uh two humans in it and a, a plant they showed two humans and animals so we need to uh reevaluate what we do and what we influence and who we influence and how we influence and not look at humanity one one human to be the solution to growing fruit trees when in actuality it a, takes a team of nature to uh, grow fruit trees to create Eden. Anyway, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Uh, I just want to thank you for watching and uh, if you're watching you want the answers and you want to be able to help our ecosystems here in Florida and around the world and uh, we can do it. I feel like the momentum is, is picking up and I have hope that uh, we can leave this place a better spot for future generations. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe and comment. I love hearing from you if you enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.